Welcome back everybody to Forza Horizon 4. So I've uh, bought a few houses in between episodes, primarily the Fairlawn Manor. Cost a two, uh, cool 2 million credits, but I uh, got 10, wheel spin, 10 super wheel spins in fact out of it and I got a fair bit of money back. So it didn't cost all that much and the primary reason for getting this is it's uh, pretty close by to several things I want to do. Primarily a few of these uh, cross country races we've got to do. So uh, yeah, let's get on with it. I've chosen this uh, Chevrolet Colorado because it's easily one of my favourite uh, all-wheel drive cars on this game that isn't, you know, like a supercar or something. So, uh, In yeah, yards, hopefully it'll uh, prove well right. on these cross-country races. Certainly helped us find one of those uh, barn finds. Right. Unfortunately, the 15th one is still eluding us. I, uh, I don't know if it locks when you uh, finish the uh, all of the uh, big end races on each uh, discipline or not, but we'll find it eventually. But for now, let's do this. Nope, we'll pick something of our own. Is this included in the off-road? No. So some bustle cars. See, it says current car off roaders, but it's not there. So I don't know what it's talking about. Uh, we'll just go 2010's collection. Should hopefully throw up some variety. Yeah, this has plenty of ground clearance, all-wheel drive, a decent amount of power to uh, deal with the, whatever this cross-country uh, race is going to throw at us, because we're going to be in this for a few of the races. And uh, yeah, then we'll uh, move on to probably uh, one of those uh, vlog races or a drift one or something like that, and then we'll uh, do a couple of drag races, because I've been promising you to do that, uh, so I'm going to do it. And uh, I've lined up a, a special car for a couple of those, so hopefully it'll uh, prove worthwhile. So yeah, a couple of unusual choices here. Primarily that Morgan three wheeler. I can't see the sense in having a Ford Crown Victoria either. Bully that Morgan out of the way. <laughs> Doesn't weigh anything. Has no bulk against us. There's even another one up front. Trying to take on that Ford. We won't succeed in that regards. So the car is ludicrously heavy. It's just a four-door saloon. Super is having trouble. And we're already up to fourth place. Let's go over the uh, golf course. Well, surprise, surprise, it's the off-road pickups that are dominating this. I'm really surprised by how much I like this car because on paper it sounds rubbish, it's not all that light and yet it barely has 300 horsepower and yet for whatever reason I just like it. It's got a certain amount of charisma to it that I just wasn't expecting compared to the likes of a uh, Ford one F150 Raptor, it just feels slightly more alive. that car with its stupid amount of gears and turbocharged V6 just feels a bit wooden really. I like how uncomplicated this car is. It's a simple naturally aspirated V6, six speed gearbox, I think, I think it's six. And this is actually faster in terms of uh, top speed than that uh, Raptor as well. get our first win in with this uh, Chevy. Yeah, it's a lot of modern Chevrolets these days are uh, 
really rather enjoyable as far as I'm concerned. You got this, you got the Camaro, you got the Corvette. It's just, they seem to be uh, ahead of the game in a few uh, specific markets as far as I'm concerned. Right, I don't think the other ones are far away from here. Nope, there's one here. Right, near us, to be honest. Turn around when it is safe to do so. Like the other big races that we've got to do on the series, I've yet to decide what I'm going to take on that cross country uh, main race. It's going to be a pretty big one, so we need something that's quite fast and uh, able to deal with off-road stuff. I'm not going to pick the Jeep though that I chose in the uh, Dirt Racing series final race. Seems a bit unfair to use the same car twice. Especially considering we've got a wide variety of vehicles to choose from. Who knows, I might upgrade this so it's competitive and quick. Is this a sports utility heroes? No. Usually it picks the uh, uh, usually it picks the uh, whatever you uh, have and uh, chooses the category for that. Don't know why it's not for this one, but we'll go with 20 tons again. Seem to be fairly competitive in that uh, type of vehicle. Even if there are some weird choices that are uh, picked for racing in these. Can't really see the sense in driving a Morgan three-wheeler off-road or a front-wheel drive Clio. And we've got a Mazda MX-5 now. Another front-wheel drive Clio again. Another Morgan three-wheeler but it's predominantly pick up this time round and it's the Nissan uh, Titan Warrior that is uh, dominating the proceedings. I don't know why that car is so popular on this game. I don't find it all that enjoyable to drive to be honest in the Forza Motorsport 7 but maybe it is when uh, it comes to off-roading. Probably should have taken that shortcut a lot quicker, easier route. Relax also uh, to learn from my mistakes. Not very long laps either. There though. Jumps and landing jumps do slow you down. So we're going to catch first place, so they've got quite a lead and we've only got this lap to go. It's pretty debatable whether or not that shortcut is quicker or not. But nonetheless, we are not going to get first place again this time round. I guess we were too far back for too long. And uh, this isn't a very uh, long lapped race. 
yeah, you need to be a lot more aggressive at the beginning if you're going to win that one. But second place is still decent. It's a power wagon that was in front as well. Which I guess explains why it was so quick, because that car's got way more power than I do. Even if it is a heavier vehicle. Right, we'll do one more in this pickup and then we'll uh, go do one of those uh, drift things or something. Because, uh, yeah, we've got still plenty of them to do. How many have we got? Let's just put the filter back on. Where is it? I don't know where this has come from, but I can't remember that being there when I went to do this, so that must be a new dirt race, so we'll ignore that. I'll do that on my own time. But yeah, where's the drift one gone? I'll have to... Oh, wait. Well, there's a vlog one. We've got five more of them to do. So there's, yeah, plenty of them to do, and there's a drift one, and we've got seven of them. Yeah, we'll have to do a couple of them if we're going to uh, get anywhere in this playthrough. So yeah, we'll do a couple more of them after we've uh, done another cross-country race. So yeah, let's take the filter off and put it back on so we can find them properly. So yeah, there's three over here. Now uh, there's this one down here. We'll go do this one. Shouldn't take us too long to get there, I don't think. This car's pretty sprightly, despite its uh, simple engine and not all that much power. So it's sort of fairly fun to drive, which again, it's not something you'd expect from a pickup truck. like pretty much every pickup up from the back. I do actually quite like the uh, the design on the front. people in those Baja buggies. Maybe I should give one of them a uh, chance again because for whatever reason that was rather a slow one when I tried it the first time around. here, make up some time. So well, this, good, uh, this truck's good at after all, on the road. You have arrived at your destination. Beach view cross country. Once again, we'll, uh, we'll go where anything goes, see if that's makes up anything, uh, gives us any new opponents to go against. Stick with this though. And then yeah, we'll go see, a could do a couple of those drift ones and then we'll do a couple of drag races. And then we'll move on to the uh, road racing series in the uh, next episode finish off the final few races in that and then do the uh, the final big race 
Let's look at that. We'll get some more interesting vehicles. Got an Escort Cosworth. Got a Lotus uh, 11 or whatever it's called behind us. Not the kind of car I choose, to be honest, for this kind of race. In fact, there's very little here that I'd actually choose for this race, to be honest. Certainly won't choose a Charger or a Nissan GTR from the 70s. And even though the Hummer is a capable off-roader, it's not the kind of vehicle I'd use for racing. Super wheel spin, it's good to know. Hopefully I have some luck with that one. Pretty tough one, this one. Plenty of jumps and water to deal with. Sliding across the beach. Out the way, sheep. Big jump. Wee. Fun point to point on this one. Me and the four taking the lead here. In the final bit. Come on, Chevy, you can do it. Yeah, I imagine if that course was a bit more straight orientated that I wouldn't have won because, yeah, this doesn't have the, uh, the quickest of accelerations to 100. But it's pretty sprightly to uh, 60, it's just over 6 seconds, so uh, fairly good for, uh, yeah, again, a car that doesn't have all that much power considering how much it weighs. Right, let's move on to those uh, drift races. Got another wheel spin with the super one that we just got. So we'll do these. Come on, be lucky, be lucky. Be unlucky. Oh. That's what my luck is like whenever I record. I've had those, all those super wheel spins before when I've not been recording and i got like hundreds of thousands of credits and yet whenever it's on here it's just not the luckiest thing ever. Maybe I should stop. I know I should, but I uh, enjoy showing off uh, you guys what I could can win. Well, that's at least a car. Right. Since I think these are quite far away. Yeah, I'll uh, see you when we uh, get to this uh, first get to our first uh, drift chapter for this episode. There's a nice spot on the way up to Edinburgh the drift club's been eyeing up. I think you've earned the right to have first crack and show off a little, what you reckon? I've thrown on new high grip front tyres, tuned the throttle response in the computer and lowered it on firm springs. Well, if you get to show off, and so do I. Alright then, so our first chapter on this episode. Yard. I think you'll see what I'm getting at. Yeah, when this Honda rest you foul. Which we're not succeeding with at the moment.
off-roading when we're drifting. That's what I like to see. Now, I would like to see more, please. And up here, just a cheeky little detour down the side. Well, off you go, eh? No rush, do Drift Club proud. I'm really chuffed Joel persuaded you to front up our little van. I think it's just the thing we needed. If we really want to be taken seriously, we need a bit of a personality to lead the way. A nice one. Anyway, no more said about that. I think I need to use a handbrake more with that one. Because like I said, he put front uh, grip tyres on. So the rear end has less grip than the front, and that makes it slide out. But I was just struggling with that one, I just don't know why. Didn't struggle that much with the others beforehand. But nonetheless, we'll do another one and then we'll go do some drag racing. Because I've uh, created a fairly formidable car that you'll also see in a How Fast Will It Go uh, episode. But for now, it's going to be uh, using some drag races because it's uh, pretty formidable in terms of acceleration, never mind top speed. Onwards and upwards, eh? We'll take a longer drift drive this time. True drift club has the skills and technical challenges involved in covering that sort of distance. 98 Sylvia K, 2.6 litre, inline six, and the full rocket bunny boss kit. I might have got a little carried away here, but I was sure you wouldn't mind. Apart from the fact that this car doesn't have a rear bumper, I actually quite power. like this version this of the Sylvia. Too much power. You really shouldn't need the floor in. Watch the rear. It's slippy. If it comes out, you're using too much power. In 400 yards, turn right. Daisy. In four hundred yards. Blinding bit of sun there. Not helpful when you're driving up the road. is what everyone wants to see. Not actual friction, of course, because that's an invisible force. There's no way to see an invisible force. Hmm. Not bad. But do I need to explain again about power to weight ratios? What you can see, however, is clouds of smoke from tires starting to burn at 121.11 degrees Celsius or 250 degrees Fahrenheit for those who prefer imperial measurements, of course. I thought I'd have uh, less trouble to get in this car out on the back end, considering it's raining. This car seems to have a lot of grip for a car that's supposed to be a drift car. for the uh, handbrake technique, I don't like doing any drifts because it feels a bit cheatsy but it's going to get us a lot of points and so be it. Look at that. If we 
get them used to long drives, we can have drip grubbers laying down rubber in every corner of the UK. Yeah, I imagine you can get a hell of a lot of points out of that. But these objectives are ones that I don't bother looking at until I've uh, completed every race and then I'll hunt for the stars in my own time. But yeah, evident that if you're going to do these ones, you need to use a handbrake. That's what I've learnt, because I had no trouble with the uh, ones before all of this, in this uh, before this episode, but it seems that certain drift cars you do need to use a handbrake just to get that rear end going. So, uh, yeah, it's just a learning curve. Even when I was, as you can see, with me struggling, I still got more than 200,000 points. So, uh, yeah, even with my pathetic skills, can still uh, do fairly decently. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna go down here and do this first, uh, well, the second drag strip race, but only the second one of this entire playthrough. But nonetheless, let's go there, and uh, yeah, so you see, uh, you can see what I uh, have made. Specifically for uh, drag racing. So here we are with our first drag race in the Hot Wheels tr Twin Mill, and uh, yeah, it's got more than 1,900 horsepower and uh, all-wheel drive as well. So uh, hopefully it will uh, do well here. But as you can see, we are up against other cars like me, but none have the all-wheel drive and the speed, leaving them in the dust <laughs> easy peasy wow <laughs> I'm surprised about how quick that was I mean I know it was it's quick to 60 and to 100 but I didn't expect it to uh, be nearly three seconds ahead of whoever's behind me wow yeah that was good <laughs> but then again that's what 1900 horsepower and all-wheel drive will do Ooh, right, we're going to do another one. Only problem with this car is handling and braking. It really doesn't do either, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, you'll see that one way I drive to the next one. But we got a wheel spin for that. So it's all good. Ah, uh, I don't want tan boots. I'd well and truly prefer the Sandman. I swear, worst luck ever. Check you out. Well, you're through to the next round. Where did you learn to race like that? Misspent youth, perhaps? Definitely. Way too much time on games like this. Right. Let's go to the beach. Turn around. And you can see how poorly so. this car handles. Recalculating route. Also likes to slide a lot. Like that. <laughs> In four hundred yards, turn right. Turn right. Stop. Yeah, the brakes are awful. quick acceleration. This gets past about 140 or so, it doesn't have Turn all that great of a uh, kind of acceleration yards. speed. Turn left. Turn left. Seems to struggle uh, to keep up the momentum really. In 200 yards. Turn left. Turn left. In 400 It'll yards. also be interesting to see what Turn this car right. can do in our uh, extreme off-road to the builds. You can give it rally uh, tyres, you can give it rally suspension, and obviously yards. it does have all-wheel drive Turn already. Right. You have arrived at your destination. Hopefully though I do not need rally tyres for this race, because I haven't got them on. Hopefully the all-wheel drive will suffice. really wish, because uh, you obviously have the uh, 
category customs and hot rods and whatever that we would uh, have more 40s and 50s cars that are like that. I mean, I'd die to have the Hudson Hornet back on this game after it's been away for so long. See ya! Don't want to be ya. Too easy. 224 across the finish line. And they are how far behind? Whoa, more than four seconds behind. Though, uh, interestingly, all of the bone shakers, well, the three behind me, were all at the same time. 20.797 seconds. That's weird. Would not expect them to be that precisely uh, in time. And then the two behind that, those three, are uh, less than point zero of a three of a second behind. Curious, they must be all set up the same to be that close to one another. But nonetheless, yeah, this twin mill with the setup that I've given it, <laughs> it's just unbeatable as far as AI is concerned. What have we won? The Ultima 1020, nice. Not sure if we already have that or not. But if we do, I'll just sell it. Uh, Nonetheless, right, there's a little well lot. On the drag strip, but how about we take this further? All you have to do is finish this. The ultimate drag strip. An idea for me and my crew with consultation from our own Jay Shah. Win here, and you'll be a Horizon legend, underground and over. Alright, then I guess we should do this one. Let's do the juggernaut. Now, unfortunately, this looks like it has a few corners involved. Which, considering this car doesn't like corners might throw up some issues. Oh dear. Well, because he doesn't like jumps either. Okay, that's not something I have to struggle with on the motorway, but... Yeah, I am slightly concerned. Well, hopefully my uh, concerns aren't justified. Still makes me laugh that they ever put this in the Forza game. Because obviously this isn't the first game this has been featured in, but it doesn't get any less insane no matter how many times it's been featured, because just look at it. Oh dear, we're all over the place. not have all the uh, best reactions. It's rather sluggish at, you know, quickly moving out of the way of something. Which is a problem if you're going along the motorway. Because there's plenty of traffic. On. This is one thing I don't like about this game is you have to be at a certain speed to go through things. If you're in a tight spot like that, then you can't get the speed up. You can't get through whatever is in front of you. At the roundabout, take the fourth exit. Bad brakes, bad brakes. Right, the juggernaut. The juggernaut. Right, there we go. Rods and customs, yes. I'm not going to pick anything else for this kind of thing. Alright, so let's see what this twin engine beast can do. We're going to have the launch, but are we going to have the handling? Because this isn't what I'd call a drag strip, strip to be honest. It's like a one race on the motorway. At least there's no traffic. Uh, 
to the time warp. Easy peasy. Come on, what were they doing? Oh, they're miles behind. Again, the bone shakers are very close together from one another. I mean, there's less than a second between ninth and second, so that pretty much says it all. But yeah, there we go. That's all the drag ones done by the looks of things. I was expecting them to be more than that, but I guess because they're so short, it doesn't really matter how many there are. Is that it? No new cars been added, but yeah. No more of those, unfortunately. So we can't see what else this twin mill can do. But yeah, nonetheless, there we go. So uh, yeah, like I said earlier, we're going to be doing the road racing series races in the next episode as we have these final three here to do. And then we'll move on, well, four even, four, four to do. And then we'll do the uh, Colossus race at the end of the episode. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that because it should be uh, pretty damn fun. But nonetheless, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.